Hello, my name is Olivia Rustin, and I will be presenting the work More Than It Seems, Garment Stitching in Wearable E-Textiles. This work was completed together with my co-authors, Leon Watts and Mike Fraser. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask you to take a moment to get comfortable. Sit back in your chair, or maybe adjust your stance, stretch out your arms and straighten your back. I want you to think about how your clothes feel on your body. If you're wearing a shirt, you might feel the fabric straining against your movements. If you're wearing a jumper, the knitted material might stretch as you do. All clothing is worn on and moves with the body, but different clothes are intended for different uses, which impacts how they are designed and constructed. I'm going to talk about seams in clothing and how they can be designed for interactive sensing of body movement. In our work, we have produced bodice garments in which seams are constructed using conductive yarn. The conductive yarn seams are activated at low voltages, which fluctuate as body movement varies tension across the seams. We explore how garment blocks, seams and stitches provide a traditional language for clothing design, which can be repurposed and ultimately reconsidered in the emerging opportunities that clothing provides as the user interface. Through our work, we demonstrate that passing low voltage through seams sewn from conductive yarn enables identification of body movement. We carried out investigations that compare stitches to identify the best balance of steam conductivity against robustness under repeated stretching. Zigzag stitching provides an excellent balance, but recalibration between stitches is still necessary. We evaluated garment designs while looking for differences in resistance across different seams under the influence of torso movement. Focusing on the effects of construction, we found that seam number and seam placement benefit the discrimination of body movement. Our work is grounded in an understanding of fashion design and construction processes. In order to find ways to exploit them for fabrication of wearable e-textiles whilst maintaining existing practices, we focus on seams and their wider role in garment construction. Seams refer to the line of stitching which join together two pieces of fabric. In garments, seams provide structure, making flat fabrics and creating something that fits the body. There are a number of steps in creating a finished garment. I find it easiest to understand them by working back through the process. Before you have a finished garment, you must go through the pattern stage. Activities at this stage inform the construction. A pattern is a set of templates and instructions which describe the shape of the fabric pieces and how they should be sewn together. A pattern is developed from a design sketch using a garment block. A block defines the dimensions for a basic garment form. Block sets vary, but typically they include a bodice, skirt, sleeve and trousers. They can be combined and adapted to make clothing of all different styles and shapes. So just to reiterate that, a block enables a bespoke pattern to be made, which can then be used to produce a finished garment. In our exploratory design work, we produced a sleeveless bodice using a garment block. It was sewn on a domestic sewing machine using conductive yarn. Conductive yarn is a resistive material. In this case, it's made from 20% stainless steel and 80% polyester. It's intended for stretch and pressure sensing. Tension increases the mechanical connections between the stainless steel threads, resulting in reduced electrical resistance. The first prototype, which you can see on the left, was made in an undyed calico. This is a cheap material, typically used when drafting new garments. A subsequent prototype was made using a blue coloured jersey. You can see this on the left. This material is often used in clothing. It's quite stretchy and you will recognise it as the material that t-shirts are made from. An Adafruit floorboard was sewn to the garments and connected to the seams. Metal snap fasteners were sewn at either end of the seam and the corresponding fastener was attached to a wire which was attached to the floorboard. Early testing with the bodice involved repeating a sequence of movements and recording the voltage values measured. The board was connected to a computer by USB, providing both power and serial communication. Voltage signals measured and were then logged in a CSV file. At points in the movement, the signal from the side seam suggested some relationship between movement and seam manipulation and voltage. 
We carried out a series of investigations into the robustness and behaviour of conductive yarn. Firstly, we assessed the viability of the material by measuring how resistance varies through the conductive yarn. Our findings indicated that there are some breaks in conductivity. Subsequently, we investigated how different stitch types affect overall conductivity and whether they offer any mitigation for the material faults. We tested two stitch types, the zigzag and plain stitch, with varying dimension, making a total of five variations. The initial resistance of each sample was measured, and then the sample stretched to the limit of the fabric and the resistance measured again. In some instances, it was not possible to record a reading for resistance, and this was labelled as a failure. The double zigzag, 1.5 length, 1.5 width, did not fail in any sample before or after stretching. We concluded this to be the most robust stitch type from the variations tested. The final investigation considered wear and tear on the seam. The average resistance across the samples decreased after repeated stretching, which suggested that manipulation caused the base level resistance resistance to change. Therefore, in our main experiment, movements are calculated from signal deviations and resting values. In the main study, we compared two designs, focusing on different seam placements and number of seams. They were based on the original prototypes and made from a pink coloured jersey. The first, which you can see in the two images on the left, were made from two pieces of fabric and used two vertical seams under the arms, which you would often see in t-shirts. The second was made from two panels of fabric with two underarm seams and two additional pairs of seams added to the front and the back, making a total of six seams. We evaluated garment designs by looking for differences in resistance across seams under the influence of torso movement. A single experimenter wearing the garment performed three defined movements. The movements were designed to increasingly focus movement around the torso, with movement one having the least torso movement and movement three having the most. We took inspiration from yoga as a practice that has a defined set of variable movements. This provided a structured approach to experimentation. It is also possible to define the beginning and end points of yoga movements making it suitable for the necessary calibration. There were four main findings from our study. However, due to time, I'm only going to pick out one to talk about, but please look at the paper for the full story. For the torso in the forms of movement we were looking at, um, the most significant voltage changes were seen in the back seams and the least in the front. This makes sense when you think about how we move. We don't typically invert our back in everyday life and this would stretch the seams at the front. However, the front seams do contribute to the fit of the garment to the body, perhaps further explaining why garment two performed better than garment one. There is a balance to strike between sensing capabilities and the mechanical responsibilities of seams. The images on screen show stays on the left, which is a horror historical support garment, and on the right, a professional surfer wearing a wetsuit. And I mean, why are these here? So the stays are constructed to support the body and the wetsuit is designed with seams that enable um, surfers to paddle through the water. And we can look to historical garments and specialised sportswear for possible seam placements that we can use in this um, motion sensing technology. Okay, so to conclude, I'll reiterate the key contributions. We demonstrate that passing low voltages through seams sewn from conductive yarn enables identification of body movement. Through a comparison of stitch types, we identify that double zigzag provides the best balance of seam conductivity against robustness under repeated stretch, but that recalibration between stretches is still necessary. We evaluated garment designs focusing on the effects of construction with findings indicating that seam number and seam placement enhance discrimination of movement. If you would like to find out more, please check out our paper.